you know, in the core of boxing, there's one thing that us fighters have all in common, and that's religion. Whether you're Catholic, like myself, whether you're Muslim, or you're Jewish, or you're Hindu, all we pray for, realistically, is protection, because, you know, we're there fighting, putting our lives on the line, and we want to be healthy, uh, because our health is our wealth once when we are in that ring. So today is Palm Sunday. I'm on my way to my church, the Catholic Church here in uh, Vegas. No school today. We're going to my church. Last week I went to my coach's church, uh, Christian church, and it was also fun. Uh, I embraced it. Uh, I had a lot of fun. And you know, the Christian church is different from the Catholic. They sing, they dance, it's like a party. Uh, they're praising Jesus, and uh, it was fun. Coach Capitito had his head pastor pray for me. Uh, it was, uh, it was uh, a good feeling. I embraced it. Whoever's listening to this, you know, don't let religion come in the way to friendship, brotherhood, sisterhood. You know, we're all under one umbrella. We're all sons of God, so embrace your religion, embrace your faith, and live happily ever after. This is your traditional barber talk, where you kill an hour or two, talk about the day, talk about rumors, gossip, whatever. You know, so relaxing. What are we talking about today, bro? Talking about LaGreco versus Khan. LaGreco versus Khan. Khan. Gone, gone. I got this message right now. They're like your start. They didn't have a clue who you were, but watching these videos have made me definitely a boxing fan. I'm a Khan fan, but as well yours, and thank you got this. Thank you. One by one, I'm gonna get you all. And didn't Amir Khan just get like a recently get a new trainer or something? I heard he got uh he's with Dan Goosey, which I don't know if it's a good fit for him, but it's a good fit for me because I'm hoping that he'll make him fight in the pocket till one of us gets knocked out. You know what I mean? So, but at the same time, he's a good trainer as well, Dan Goose. And listen, you could have all the best trainers in the world. It ain't gonna save your legs, and it ain't gonna save your chin. It's time to say goodbye. Ciao. Realistically, this is the only time that I actually got ready for a fight where I have three months to get ready. You actually fucking think? I was gonna go to the UK, talk all this nonsense just because I wanted a fucking lousy paycheck. Come on, man. I know what I'm fighting for this time around. I'm 33 years old and I'm there to win and I'm gonna win. What's going on, bro? Beeping out in Toronto. I hear you get a snitch down in Vegas. With you what? Know? Regarding what? Are people, are people, are people stupid down there? Like, what do they think? That the word doesn't spread around very quickly? I don't care. It doesn't bother me. You know what I mean? It's part of the business. It's part of boxing. They want to say I'm having a, I'm a bad camp. Good. I want them to think I'm having a bad camp. I'm having a horrible fucking camp. Listen, you just focus on kicking some ass, knock some motherfuckers out, and I'll just bring you some money. All right, good. I like that. I like that. <coughs> no, in that post. Mother's always worried about me. I'm a family man. I don't know my father, my mother. They've done so much, they sacrificed their life for me. Tempo, my man. Boom, cow. What's up in the center for the guy? Yeah? Yeah. It's gonna snow probably for Easter. I'm like, oh, nice. Nice. Wait, Dodo. Ma fumato un rusegar. Oh, look at you there, Salou. Yes, I said, smoke the cigar. Yeah. Ah. 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 Especially since I've been away for a few months. Oh. Well, after the gym, let's go. Right here in Vegas is, is 2,500 feet up, up in the sea. 
uh, in, uh, in England, we're going to fight on the sea level. So he's going to have the advantage of oxygen and, and condition. He's going to be more energy to fight. So yeah, we're going to wait before to Liverpool and it's going to be fine. It's going to be ready. Obviously, we had Fernando over the house the last couple of days. I mean, uh, this guy is just like, he's just like us. He's a family man. He's very welcoming. His wife as well, Marta. Wow! <laughs> we're eating together, we're laughing together. Uh, you know, it's like a, a good family affair. Everyone is enjoying each other's company. For one of your fights, for well, guess what? Did it sit on your mind? But the thing is, is, let me tell you something. In my life, as an amateur pro, against Tito Trinidad, that I got knocked down five times, and I don't remember. I was crying that And I don't remember. And then on the fifth or the fourth, you knocked ten down. Yeah. And I was like, holy fuck, how much better is this fight gonna get? Yeah. Did you look bad when I went down? She goes, baby, you gotta go to I said, what? How many times did I go down? She goes, yeah. <laughs> positive vibes, uh, which is very healthy for the mind, body, and spirit. And uh, personally, I like to keep the fighter with the coach all business, unless there's something special. There's like that special bond, a special spark. And I haven't had that with any trainers up until this camp right here. With Capitillo, feels like family. With Fernando feels like family. <laughs> Grab everything you can, kids. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> uh, Look at the mano. Was a warm mugging bird. So unless it really naturally becomes a good bond, then I think it's acceptable. But when you try to force a, a relationship with your coach and your fighter, and you try to be, become like more like family, and you're forcing it, sometimes it doesn't. It, most times it does not work out. This is what it works out because it was just very natural. It was just like bread and butter. But when you surround yourself with a great team, you know, for example, Fernando Vargas, this guy's life was designed for the odds to be against him. And he beat the odds. He was a successful fighter. He was like the Canelo of today. If Fernando Vargas would have been around today with today's digital era, he would have been super popular, more popular than Canelo because number one, he was an Olympian, he spoke English, and he didn't give a fuck. He, and he can fight. So, you know, uh, for me, it's very inspirational. He's a guy that I always looked up to when I was in my teens. Uh, back in 99, 2000, 2001, he was on top of the boxing world. And, and we're both excited for this fight because he's got so much attention. I've created a lot of buzz. I've created a lot of buzz for this fight because I wanted to.